Welcome into another bonus question here on Hockey Inside Out. This question about Carey Price and whether or not he has the Hall of Fame credentials, gentlemen. But before we get to that, though, I'll give you a record of a career of an NHL goaltender. You tell me yes or no if this goalie is Hall of Fame worthy. This goalie won 401 games, had a 2.4 goals against average as well, and a 9 5 save percentage and three-time Stanley Cup winner. 400 wins. You look at the goals uh, also, 2.49, and the same percentage of 905. Is this goalie Hall of Fame worthy, yes or no? Yes. Rick? Yes. Andrew? I know who this is, I, and I am going to unfortunately say no. Uh, I think it takes a, the bar is extremely high for being a Hall of Fame goaltender. For whatever reason, the bar is lower for forwards than it is for defensemen and goaltenders, and I'm going to say no to – Chris Osgood? That's correct. Chris Osgood. Those are Chris Osgood's numbers. So we go to Carey Price. Right now, if he doesn't play a single game in the remaining uh, remainder of his NHL career, Carey Price, 361 wins. He would have a 2.51 goals against average and a 917 save percentage. Jack Todd, is Carey Price going to be bound for Toronto for the Hall of Fame at some point in the next four, five, ten years, whatever it might be? Yes, I, I, I don't think there's any doubt. He, uh, I mean, I can see there are a lot of people, even in this demographic, who argue that he shouldn't be. But, uh, you know, it, in, in part, it's a popularity contest, and, and it enhances his popularity, like the high profile with the, you know, world championships and, and the Olympics. Uh, and, I, you know, I covered Kerry's first press conference as a, as a rookie at his first camp. I covered his first game. Like I followed probably more of his career than any other goaltender here. And it's an odd career because it kind of got off to a spotty start in the beginning. He was up and down. Then you have this huge middle where he was just completely dominant. And then he tailed off sooner than a lot of people have, like Brodar, for instance, or, or Patrick. And I think that was because of the injuries. So, you know, there will probably be people who won't vote for him, but I think. He just when you carry the reputation as the best goalie in the league for at least five years, you're you're a shoe in. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Jack. Uh, I think it's very rare for a goaltender to or for anybody to win a Hart Trophy and not be a Hall of Famer. And I think we saw that this year with Henrik Sedin win uh, being a first ballot Hall of Famer. And frankly, I don't think the Sedins had anywhere close to first ballot Hall of Famer careers. They were great in the second half of their careers. They were also the most sheltered superstars in the NHL throughout their primes, starting like 80% of their shifts in the offensive zone, really not playing top lines ever. They were there to produce offense and produce offense they did. But were they anywhere close to like Daniel Alfredson, who they went in with? I, I don't think so. But Carey Price has the gold medal in the Olympics, won the World Cup. You know, he, he's got uh, a final run. Obviously, he didn't win a Stanley Cup. That hurts. But he's got the Hart Trophy, the Jennings, the Vesna, the the Lindsay. All, those, all that hardware is hard to say no to. And like Jack said, it is a popularity cont contest. And everyone in hockey has been seeing Carey Price as the best goaltender for entire, like almost the entirety of his career, not just in terms of his results, but his technique. And you can see that with modern goaltenders. Now, everybody wants to play like Carey Price played, have that efficiency of movement, have that control when you're going side to side. His career was derailed by injuries. You know, Chris Kreider, we can all shake our fist at him. That's probably what made things go off the rails the worst, but overall, even though his career was shortened, I think he's a surefire Hall of Famer. Probably wouldn't be a first ballot guy. He, he's probably second behind Lundqvist in this like era of the post lockout time for me. Yeah, I mean, look at he's he's won at all levels uh, before the two thousand five junior whatever he did. He was always an elite goaltender, uh, you know. And the career he had in the NHL with the the trophies and the uh, success he had, you know. Uh, to me, it's uh, it's a very simple answer that he, he goes in there. He's just been uh, uh, exceptional for quite a few years, and has uh, you know allowed to his his team that he played for 
to uh, have some some good runs at her. Unfortunately, he didn't get the ultimate in the Stanley Cup, but everything else uh, that he did acquire over the course of his career merits uh, a nomination into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Well, domestically, half fans in the city will say he is a Hall of Famer, but in your mind, gentlemen, did this team, the Montreal Canadiens, give him enough surrounding firepower to put him in that conversation of going for a cup run? Because in his prime years, he had that 14-15 run, but that's about it when it comes to the genesis of this Carey Price power that he was for this franchise. I mean, if you if you if you look at the teams over the course of uh, the NHL seasons, uh, there's there's timing, there's situations where uh, everybody is in the right place at the right time, and that remains the same with the goaltender and having the proper supporting cast, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is a huge part of it, but that doesn't take away from the, the bottom line or the, the, the mere fact that when somebody even has uh, the success that uh, a guy like Carey Price has uh, standing on his head uh, for a number of nights, uh, stopping pucks for what he had in front of him is, uh, you know, is something should be recognized as a job well done. I, I think, yeah, I don't think they gave him anywhere close to the supporting cast necessary. Yeah. He, I've always thought his best Sorry, go for Jack. performance was 2011. When the, he, it was 2011, right? When he went head to head with Tim Thomas and lost in overtime in Game Seven. Uh, yeah, Kerry was so good in that series; he might have taken that team all the way. And everybody forgets because he lost the series. Yeah, I mean, I, I would classify his uh, his Cup Final run his best performance, just because I think we all know what him and Shea Weber sacrificed to get to that point. And frankly, I, I just don't think that team was very good. They played the style they had to to get where they did, but they don't get anywhere close to the Stanley Cup final without Carey Price putting up, I think he had like a 96 or 97% save percentage while on the penalty kill. He was just absolutely gangbusters, best high danger save percentage in the league uh, heading into that Stanley Cup final until Tampa Bay finally picked them apart and uh, exposed them playing injured, you know, devastating injuries to his knee. Uh just incredible uh, stick to itiveness from Carey Price, but I, they clearly missed the window for con- cup contention with that team. I think when we look back to the beginning of the Bergevin machine, uh, regime, there was a huge misread of what that team was. When you had PK Subban, who was a top three defenseman in the league coming out of that lockout, Pat- Max Pacioretty, who was top three in goals coming out of that lockout, uh, Carey Price, who was the best goaltender in the world coming out of that lockout. Brennan Gallagher as a rookie, Alex Galchenyuk, who never worked out, but at that point in his career, that first year, scored more at even strength than any teenage rookie since Sidney Crosby. So, like, there was potential there to buckle down if after that loss to the Senators, which was, you know, driven by injury and bad luck, and go back at it next year, and instead they just blew apart what their strategy was, hunkered down into being this defensive shell team, and signed a guy like Douglas Murray, and it, they just never got back to that level of play again. It was just Carey Price carrying them. It, it's a huge missed opportunity for me. And, and even through those tough times and, and a cast that maybe wasn't the uh, the best supporting cast for him, he still uh, stands out as the Canadiens' uh, most winningest uh, goalie in, uh, in franchise history. So, uh, you know, um, that that, alone that's is it. Probably good. <laughs> Finally, guys, Carey Price, will his number be retired and hang up in the rafters next to Patrick Waugh and the other luminaries at the Bell Center? Yes, I think it will be. Uh, you know, he has the credentials. He carried this team for a decade, uh, sacrificed a whole lot for it uh, in terms of his own health. Uh, you know, he was never the easiest guy to deal with, but uh, that doesn't count when it comes to uh, – raising numbers to the rafters. So, you know, Dryden's there, was there, he'll be there. Yeah, I think he's going to be the first guy without a cup to, to have his number retired. Yeah, that's true. I, I think he's deserving. Well, I'll say this. He had big shoes to fill wearing number 31 after Ed Ronan. And I think he did a pretty good job <laughs> for his career as a Montreal Canadian member. That'll do it here for this bonus episode of Hockey Inside Out. Don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube page. And check out all the latest episodes and also on the MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters for all the news on the Montreal Canadiens moving forward. And for full episodes and bonus content, head on by Hockey Inside Out 
and submit your questions and comments. And we look forward to conversing about that for a future episode here on Hockey Inside Out. On behalf of Jack, Rick, and Andrew, wish you a great week. 